Yeah, so hello, my name is Alex. I study psychology. I love the reactions on that. <laughs> Most people say, oh, this is no science. And the second is, can you read my mind? Yes, of course I do. So this is what people think I actually do. It's not. The official definition of psychology is, psychology is the study of mind and behavior. So how do we study behavior, though? We do research. The function of research is to understand reality. So what are we doing as a psychologist? Psychologists love questionnaires. Questionnaires are an amazing tool to capture people's minds. Look, you have one sentence, five answer possibility, and I know everything about you. And because no one would believe me, we do it a little bit more complicated. We have maybe two or more groups, mostly students who need some money and participate in an experiment. We split them into randomized groups, do an experiment with a questionnaire again, and then we do some crazy statistics to understand our reality. So I always wonder about this artificial version to do an experiment. Is this real? Can we draw conclusions about reality using these artificial methods? And if we, go about, if we talk about space psychology, I think this is the biggest problem we have to deal with. So let's picture, we, have, we want to do research about Mars. How do people behave on Mars? But we can only do research here on Earth. This is not real. So we try to, uh, we try to find out about reality actually being in an unreal situation. So what do we do? As Olivia already said, we simulate trip to Mars. We do experiments like Mars 500, which are good, I think, because they are, con because they are really focused, they are concrete, and they create some awareness. But still, we have two major problems about this. The first is a factor of risk. What would happen if we would really go to Mars and no one could open the door from a simulation box? And the second is, we always have people who want to be in the situation, aspirants who are interested in participating, but what happens if their mood will change and they don't want to be there again? This is the thing which interests me, and this is the thing about reality. So at university, I have a teacher who really inspired me, and he said, psychology is not only about mind and behavior, it's mostly about experiencing new things. And this impressed me so much that I started to think, can't we, can't we find out about space psychology on Earth? Like, really? So can't we talk to people who already experience the situations I'm questioning, like isolation or monotone work? And yes, we can. Because we have possibilities to find out. Let's go to hospitals. There you find people who are long-term isolated. Let's go to factories. There are people who do this work every day. What happens to their brain? What happens to their perception? I started to interview people, 40, and to create a podcast. And this is what it inspired me to do. We have two tools we can use. The one is space research controlled. The other one are the answers we already have on Earth and we have to combine them, we have to interact and do a common knowledge. And the thing is, both could have a positive impact on each other. Like space research could influence situations on hospitals or in old people care. So, I think if you ask me, what is research? Research, research is not only about facts, it is about passion. It is, it is about trying out new things, not knowing where to go. It is about exploration. So look, when Columbus in 1492 left Europe, he had no psychologist to talk to him before, or no navigation system. And he did not arrive, actually, where he planned to arrive. He arrived on a different, planet, on a different spot. So sometimes I think research and reality are like two parallels who are going to meet in the infinity. And I think the most important for us sometimes is we have to ignore the facts and we have just go, just to go. So maybe reality is to fulfill our vision. Thank you. <laughs>